Hey everyone, welcome back, and this will be another bare bones tutorial on GeoPix uh, specifics. So in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to get an RGBW strip working in GeoPix. Uh, by default, GeoPix is really tuned to dealing with RGB, uh, but if you have a strip with a fourth one like amber or white, uh, you can in fact control it with GeoPix, and you can uh, do so just fine, but you won't be able to see it in the viewport. So there's a few workflows and tricks to kind of... Uh, you know, work with that data and, and just kind of fly blind as they say a little bit more, but this is going to be kind of a walkthrough in setting that up because it's a little bit different than doing just RGB. Okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna start by creating a fixture, uh, just completely empty and it's gonna be here in the viewport. So we'll just drop down to hull mode, add, add a hull, uh, hull, generate from selection and uh, there we go, we have a a uh, very simple fixture, um, but this is by default configured to be RGB. And let me go ahead and show you how you can see that. So if we go ahead and select our fixture and create a projector, and if we scale this up, and we scroll down here in the projector settings to constant color under texture, and we can uh, play with the red, green, and blue, you can see that our fixture is working and everything looks like it should. Only problem is uh, the fourth slot, which you would expect in our case that we want to control white, is not doing anything. And that is simply because it's not actually connected, right? By default, a projector comes in with the assumption that you are dealing with R, G, and B. So that alpha channel of the projector's texture is not linked to anything. Uh, this is pretty easy to fix, but we need to fix it in a few places. So uh, first, let's go ahead and select our generator and go ahead and uh, well, before we do that, um, let me show you one thing. So we are changing uh, some values here in the generator, which is going to modify our fixture. And to make this a little easier to see, you don't have to do this. You can just uh, watch along. But I'm going to set the X and Y count on the generator to 2 and 2 and make the pitch 10. So we've got a, a nice little 2 by 2. And um, I'm going to open up a tool called the channels tool. So if you go to tools at the top bar and channels tool and you'll have this uh, this window. Just make sure you're in the fixture buffer mode and under layout choose universe and make sure your universe is set to one. Uh, so what this is, it is like kind of an inspector tool, right? It lets you see your raw DMX values uh, in the software, right? This is the, the data that would go out to your, you know, pixel device right this is this is last stop before it leaves geopix so this is this is very reliable data in terms of knowing what's actually going out to your pixels uh, and this will show you any channel information right not just rgb so if i select our projector again and we move that red channel up you'll see that we have uh, r going up uh, g is going up and b uh, but like i showed you before this does nothing so uh, what gives right this is a uh, so these black squares here are the consumed channels and the gray ones are the unallocated ones and so because we have four pixels and we have uh, the standard rgb that's four times three and that gives us 12 consumed channels of data so this just validates what we already know right is that we're working with rgb not rgbw so if we grab our generator and we scroll down uh, to the generator section, you'll see something called the chance parameter. And this has the uh, string, it's just a string, common separated values here uh, of RGB. So to kind of integrate our fourth channel, which would be white in this case, I'll just do a comma W at the end. And you'll notice that this uh, now gives us 16 whole channels here in the um, channels tool inspector. and our projector uh, now also needs to be changed as well. So if we go down here to the routing section, we have the red, green, and blue, which is all set up correctly, but the, the alpha channel of the projector is not being routed to anything. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that. And let's go ahead and route the W channel, or the alpha channel to the W GeoPix channel. Uh, and just kind of a, a quick, you know, breakdown of how this works. This might be a little bit confusing if you're looking at it for the first time, but you know, a projector is basically linked to a texture. That could be a video, it could be an image, it could be anything, it could be a generative texture. And that texture uh, has four channels, right? It has a red, green, blue, and an alpha. So the way the projector works is it kind of takes one of those four channels and it routes it to one of many GeoPix channels. You might have four or three or 16 if you're doing stuff with DMX lights. Um, 
And so what you put in the, the right side is the GeoPix channel, right? And the left side just tells you, you know, which texture slot you're routing that from. So uh, our alpha channel of the texture, which is not normally used for anything you see on screen, it's more of like a compositing um, channel, right? But for us, we're gonna use it as actual data. So we just put W here for routing A to W. So once we've done that, and we have our generator uh, with RGBW. Let's make sure that our generator has actually pushed those changes to our fixture, right? Because what the generator really does is it just writes these values to um, a super important channel uh, or parameter in the fixture called Chan Order, right? And as you can see, it did in fact update this to RGBW. If I were to clear this and just type something in here, and if I were to go to the generator and do a regenerate, you'll notice that the fixture has been updated. So the generator does a lot of things. It does the actual generation of the data, but it also sets some parameters uh, that you might need to have set, in this case, Chan order. So uh, that's all we need to do. And if we grab our projector and we just fiddle with the red channel, uh, you can see that uh, that's looking good. Green's looking good, blue is looking good. And now we have a fourth channel uh, for our white uh, diode. So that's also working well. Uh, so that's pretty much everything you need to do, uh, right? At this point, you can just dive right into the IO tab and start making content. Uh, this is kind of a, a quick way to validate that you have things working. But once you do, I mean, I usually turn these off. Um, and we can just hop over here to the IO tab and uh, drop in a macro and get going. So I'm going to make a really simple macro just to show you what this workflow would look like. I, and, you know, in my own personal recommendation, um, you know, create a macro. Let's go ahead and hit play. And let's go ahead and connect this macro to our projector one. So just to recap, our projector is uh, now routing the red, green, blue, and alpha channel of this texture that you see here to, you know, the red channel, the green channel, the blue channel, and the white channel. So uh, to make sure that the alpha channel has something, you know, usable, we need to go ahead and do some configurations because by default, and this is how an image or, you know, a video file with no alpha would come into, right? It would, it would come into the IO tab. It would be working just fine, but that fourth channel would just be one, right? Because that's, that's just baked in to certain types of formats. Okay. So <clears throat> work around this uh, and also give us a little bit more of a visual workflow let's go and go inside of our macro and I'm going to just change this to uh, radial and I'll duplicate this ramp and I will edit the ramp and actually let's set up a period of 0.5 uh, and let's just do some a random grayscale um, pattern of some kind so I'm just hitting the random grayscale and uh, that looks fine. Let's do that. Okay, so we've got this ramp here. Let's just let's use this as our uh, white channel, right? And this is going to be our RGB channel. And we want to combine these because essentially we want to put this in the alpha channel of a texture and this in the RGB. So there's actually a node for this kind of operation. And if you go here to texture nodes and utilities, uh, just drop in a shuffle node, and the shuffle node will take care of this very easily. Now. Uh, I won't go into too much detail about this, but it's a fairly simple node. You have um, four inputs, red, green, blue, alpha, and you have four parameters. And each of these parameters relates to uh, you know, each input. So the red input, this is saying, uh, take the red channel from the texture plugged into the red input and the green, blue, and alpha, and so on and so forth. So the way to use this for our situation is we just go ahead and plug uh, RGB uh, in from the ramp one, and let's go ahead and plug our ramp two into the alpha and let's go ahead select our shuffle and for the alpha since this is actually just uh, an alpha of one uh, let's just go ahead and grab the luminance right the luminance is the brightness of what we see here in the node so that's going to be a very intuitive um, intuitive uh, way to kind of parse that out and so once we've done this we have red green blue and white all in one node so this looks a bit strange because we are modifying the alpha channel uh, of this texture. Uh, but <clears throat> that is, in fact, you know what we want to do. Uh, even though it's strange looking, the data is correct. Uh, and in, we know that it's correct if we hop over here to our channels tool and we just take a look. We got our red, green, blue, and that alpha channel, right? Uh, that white channel is doing something a little different. And, and we can just kind of verify that by um, 
making this move around a little bit faster. As you can see, it's really pulsing up and down fast now. Um, so this is the workflow I would use uh, in the IO tab, right? It's, it's basically kind of combine things into one texture. Uh, now you don't have to do, if this is confusing and, and you really like seeing things as two separate data streams, uh, that's just fine, right? You can delete this, uh, plug this in as well to here and we'll call this texture out RGB. And um, this is another workflow, by the way, uh, right? You can use multiple projectors for this as well. So we'll just call this text out W and we'll plug this into here. So now we've got something to use for our RGB and something to use for our white. Um, and this is still in one macro, by the way, if we go up a level and we now have two outputs here on our macro, but we only have one projector. So we can't connect these both to the same projector. Obviously we need to actually create a uh, duplicate. So for this workflow, um, I would go ahead and name this to projector RGB and duplicate this. We'll call this projector W and uh, whoops, looks like I changed a few settings here. Let's move this back and uh, we'll scroll down. And so for the routing on this second one, okay, for the first one, for the RGB, make sure you clear out your W channel, right? We're not using that anymore. Uh, so for the uh, projector W, you wanna clear out all of your routing and then for R, and you can use any of them, but we're gonna use R, we'll just put W here. Uh, and so what this is doing is it's feeding in the W channel from this projector and it's using this one for RGB. Uh, but it's using the R channel of this projector, right? So this gets a little confusing in a different way because now we're using, um, this is an RGB texture, but we're using the red channel um, to feed our, um, white channel, because again, you can route things any way you want in uh, GeoPix. So if we plug this into W and we pull up our channels tool again, you'll see that, you know, we have, we have the same result as before we have RGB and we have our white channel. And so this is an option as well. If you like to kind of work with separate data streams and really see it, um, you know, in the macro preview and inside, you know, as like a node chain. So different ways to work, but both will get you to the same place in the end of the day. Okay. I uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, if you would like, uh, stick around for the next one and until then take it easy.